Lord, we thank you for your goodness and your mercies. We thank you for your tender mercies, oh God. Because every morning you let us wake up, oh God, it's new, brand new mercies. And for that, we say thank you, Lord. We thank you for the anointing that's over this house, oh God. We thank you for the power that's over this house right now, oh God. We can't do nothing without your power. We can't do nothing without your anointing, Jesus. Lord God, we thank you on today. Say that we put you on notice this afternoon. That you have no place with the people of God. So you might as well go ahead and clean. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord God, we ask you to anoint our bishop, oh God. We ask you to anoint him from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet, oh God. Then we ask you to anoint our first lady, oh God. His health feet, oh God. Build them up where they are weak, oh God, because we know you are strong. Lord God, forgive us of all of our many sins, oh God. Cleanse us of all unrighteousness, oh God. Because you said if we hide iniquity in our heart, you cannot hear us, oh God. So Lord, we're going to take the time right now to ask you for forgiveness of all the sins that we do know and the sins we don't know of, oh God. Lord God, we ask you to bless new life as a whole and then bless us individually and collectively, oh God. Lord God, we ask you to come into the service, do what you want to do, as long as you want to do it, oh God. Because it's all about you, oh God. It's all about giving you the glory and the honor and the praise. Say that the Lord God rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we ask you to fill us up with a praise, oh God. Because you've done so much for us, oh God, and we still can't thank you enough, oh God. You even in us right now, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we ask you to bless our overseer, oh God. Lord God, we ask you to bless the elder Karen Dye, oh God, as he bring forth the word, oh God, because your word is already blessed, oh God. And can no demon in hell stop the word of God from coming forth? Lord God, we ask you to bless. We ask you to bless those that are on their way, oh God, in the mighty and merciful name of Jesus. Lord God, we ask you to bless the musicians, oh God, whatever they stand in the need of, oh God. Lord God, we ask you to go in and out of the pews, oh God, whatever situation, leave it here at Jesus, feet in the name of Jesus. Because this is holy ground. This is holy ground. This is holy ground. God, we thank you for dying for us, oh God, but you didn't just die, oh God. You rose on the third day, oh God. And without the shedding of blood, there would have been no remission of sins, oh God. So, Lord, we thank you right now in advance, oh God, for what you're getting ready to do, oh God. We thank you. We're going to put a praise on it right now in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we honor you on today, oh God. Because 15 minutes in here ain't promised to us, oh God. So, Lord God, we ask you, God, to do what you move by your power, oh God. Move by your anointing, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Because we can't do nothing without your power and your anointing, Jesus. We can't do nothing without you, oh God. We can't even breathe without you right now, oh God. So, Lord God, we ask you if there's anything that is in our heart, oh God, that's not like you, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We ask you to fill us up with your Holy Spirit one more time, oh God. We ask you to saturate this pulpit and fill it with your anointing and power, oh God. Oh God, as the word come forth, oh God, like a mighty rushing wind, oh God. Lord God, we thank you for the anointing that's over our bishop, oh God. We thank you for the anointing that's over this house, oh God. We thank you for being under a good shepherd, oh God, that you sent this way, oh God. But you could have sent them somewhere else, but you decided for him to be here to lead us, oh God. So for that, we say thank you, oh God. We say thank you, oh God. We say thank you, oh God. We give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise, oh God.
Zion. My soul cries out, Hallelujah. My soul cries out.
Clap your best hands and give them glory. Come alive in here and give them glory. Come on, let's go to a place to give him glory. Hallelujah. Ain't nobody mad for the devil. And his bald headed grandmother, too. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Amen.
matchless name of Jesus. I greet you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I thank you all for coming back and not finding a robbery to hear what God has to say through me on this afternoon. I thank you all. If you all will get your Bibles, we're going to go straight into the Word. Because I believe there is a word from the Father. If you will turn with me to the book of Acts, the 16th chapter. I'll be reading verse 25 through verse 31. Again, it is Acts chapter 16, verses 25 through 31. And the word of the Lord reads, And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang songs unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundation of the the foundation of the prison doors were open, and everyone's Bands were loose. That's enough right there. But I'm going to keep on going. Verse number 28. And Paul, but Paul cried with a loud voice, do, do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Verse number 29, it reads, Then he called for light and sprang in, came and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas. Verse 30 reads, And brought them out, out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Verse number 31, And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Thou, thou shalt be saved in the house. And the word of the Lord is already blessed. Amen. Amen. Gracious Father, I come to you right now, humble as I know how. God, I ask right now that you would use me to your glory. Allow me to minister effectively, God. I stand before your people, God. And I'm asking right now, Father God, that you will have your divine way in this service. God, they come out to hear a word from you. So God, I ask right now, God, that you will orchestrate through me how you want to minister to your people, God. God, we ask right now that whatever they came in here with, Father God, that you meet the needs of your people, God. That you will have your way like only you can, Jesus. And it is in Jesus' name we pray. Let all God's people say amen. amen. I have read Acts 16, verses 25 through 31. And if I may use for a sermon topic, immediately it happened. Immediately it happened. I'm going to give you some back, some reference or introduction to the book of Acts. The book of Acts was written to the, for the apostles. The book of Acts is the fifth book of the New Testament. It tells the foundation of the Christian church and the message to the Roman Empire. Saul was first mentioned in Acts 15, verse number 22. Was sudden, selected by the church of elders to return with Paul and the Jerus and Jerusalem count and the Jerusalem Council of Judu Judea were among the brothers. Let me give you an introduction first. Amen. The prophets and the encouraging speakers, they were encouraging speakers. What does the book of Acts stand for? The book of Acts stands to give God praise through for who he is, Lord over all. It is for prayer for the need of others and yourself. Amen. Amen. Now, if I must use for a topic here that's going to, that has stood out to me. And suddenly, there was an earthquake. So the foundation of the prisoners were, sh the prisons were shaken 
and immediately the doors were open and everyone bands were loosed. Yeah. Amen. Suddenly, not yesterday, not five minutes from now, suddenly, immediately it happened. Because Paul and Silas were the men that were chosen. And they were to return back. That's the say when we go and do what God has us to do. And they will, you know, people will ostracize you. They will scandalize your name. They will even bring up your past. Because they know that the change has taken place. And this is where they were. Because they were going about telling the goodness of Jesus. And at that time, they were, they said that they were disturbing the town. Because they were proclaiming the name of Jesus. And because they knew that they were proclaiming the name of Jesus and that in this dispensation, in this time where we are, because we are heirs of the king, when we go out and do what it is that we do, people will try to bring up your past. Yeah. People have brought up my past. Yeah. And I have, and I must say, I'm preaching, I have brought up other people's past. But I have to go back to the Father and ask him for forgiveness. And that's what the keeper had to do. He said, what must I do to be saved? Because if they were not, Paul cried out with a loud voice and he said, we all are here. When you know that you are standing on firm ground and you are believing a you are a child of God, you know there's no reason for you to run. Because I'm crying out, calling on the name of Jesus. And I'm letting it be known that we're here. And we're not going nowhere. And when you do, when you go into prayer, when you sing songs, that's just like your health. It can be a financial reason. Whatever the case may be, you can be locked up in your mind. Not just with, uh, bound by chains with your feet. You can be locked up in your mind. Stay thinking. And but when you call on the name of Jesus, you know that God begins to immediately work on your behalf. Right. And that's what Paul and Silas did. They stood because they knew who God was to them. They knew the assignment that they had to do. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know what my assignment is to do, to preach God's word. And I know naysayers are saying this and they're saying that, but it's okay. To God be all the glory. Because it's not about me. It's about the God that dwells within me. And because I know who he is to me, he is my Alpha and the Omega. He puts bread on my table. He pays my bills. He opens up doors that are impossible for me. He makes ways out of nowhere. And that's what he did here. He made a way out of nowhere. When they began to sing songs, th there was a shaking in the foundation. It was an earthquake. I serve a noisy God. I don't know why people come in the house of God wherever they may go and praise God, please God. No, hallelujah! Praise God! Because he brought me from darkness into this marvelous life. I wasn't always where I am today. I used to jump out of bed to bed. I used to run to club to club. I used to steal. I ain't never caught, killed nobody, but I used to steal, lie, do things I shouldn't do. But when a change come about, when a change happens, you can't do, you can't call yourself a child of God or a servant of God and do the same thing that you were doing back then. Change has to happen. Change has to uh, resonate in you. You have to hide this hot bird in your heart. Meditate on it. It's like an aspirin. Yeah. It fixes the problem. Amen. And that's what it did. It fixed their problem where they were. Because immediately it happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And because the keeper was there, he was asleep. Isn't it funny? <laughs> I'm singing songs and I'm praising God and, it's, and the keeper is asleep. <laughs> but everybody else around me heard the songs and prayers going up. Hallelujah. Then when he woke up, <laughs> He wasn't looking around like, wait a minute, the doors, what's, what happened? This, this wasn't like that at first. Immediately it happened. And he wanted to pull out his knife and kill himself. 
Isn't it funny how when they persecute you, and, and then when the verdict comes in, when the devil want to do what he wants to do with you, and he think he done got the praise out of it, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, immediately, God begins to work within us when our gift starts to stir up something. And immediately Satan has to what he has to flee. That's how it was. They were locked up, but the bands were loose. And immediately it happened. And he said, What must I do to be saved? What must I do to be saved? Jesus was already there on the scene. Like God is already in this house. He's on the scene. If you're lost, locked up in your mind, you got health issues, children acting crazy, husband, wife acting crazy, all you got to do is pray. Open up your mouth. And immediately it will happen. I believe in the next couple of months, God's going to turn some things around and it's going to happen immediately. Immediately. And it's going to start from the head and it's going to work its way down. Immediately. Because when God steps in on the sea, he creates an earthquake that man could not believe. He's doing it now. People are coming into this church and this house of Zion. Coming in here, crying out. They see the signs and wonders. They hear the songs and the prayers that's being echoed out the door. And they're coming in because the foundation has been re up in here. Sometimes God got to shake you up sometimes. And when he do it, and when he puts you back together with the potter's hand, you don't feel the same. You don't talk the same. You don't look at life the same. We don't see each other the same. I see the newness in you. I thank God for the newness. Because without the newness, I couldn't do this. Without the Spirit of God, I could not do this. That dwells within me. Because I'm a new preacher in Christ. He is, he is cleaning me up. And I thank God for the Mr. Clean. My cousin Mr. Clean, me and him in the ball head club. Amen. But I thank God for the Holy Ghost cleaning me up. I thank God for my obedience and, and staying in God's word and, and studying God's word and showing myself. Because I, we all are going to go to a foreign land where they do not proclaim the name of Jesus. And because God, because you know who God is and he lives in you, you're going to have to be persecuted. You may be even bound with some chains. But as long as you know who he is to you, open up your mouth and start singing. Open up your mouth and start praying. Immediately, the bond, the bands will be loosed. Those, they were shackled. They were whipped. We don't took some weapons. We don't took some hits. But we still here. We still standing on God's word. His firm foundation. And because we know who he is to us, we are winners. We're going to win. Amen. And verse 29, and they called, the, he called for light and sprang trembling. He came trembling. Can you imagine? Because he was the keeper. He knew his job, but he came there trembling. That's the same thing if overseer said, Dada, I need you to do X, Y, and Z. And I don't do what it is that she that I say, no, I'm not doing it that way. But when you see the manifestation, because God had already did something, spoke to me, or showed me something different from what she gave me, you know, we have to be, we have to come back and apologize. Yeah. That's right. We have to go back and, and be woman or man enough to say, I apologize. And that's what he had to do. Because we know we stand in all true. We stand in on something that can you can't tarnish God's word. You can't even tarnish him. Yes, Lord. He paid the ultimate price yeah, yeah. for me and you. Yeah. He did something that none of us will be able to do. Hallelujah. 
I don't care if you think that Donald Trump can do it. Oh, he's the answer. He's not. God is the answer. And since I know that God is the answer, then I'm going to stand on that. Shake my foundation. Shake my foundation. Sometimes you need to be shaken sometimes. Rebuking, you know, some of that. You need that. You need it. Because you think you got it all together. Or you have arrived. You ain't arrived. Yeah. You, you're none of that. You're none of that. And because they were chosen. It's funny how you go out on a mission and eventually, you know, God will give you. They sent him and said, do not return without Saul. He needed some help. He didn't know that they were going to go through the situation they went through. But it's something about when you get you some help. <laughs> it's something about it. I don't know about you all, but when you got some help, you link up with a praiser, something begins to happen. I know for a fact, and the right evangelist. She'll know me and her went to pray, and the residue on her, I had to have. I had to have that. I needed it. Sometimes you be each other's lifeline. So don't be stingy on your praise. Because when I link up with Minister Hers, then something's gonna happen. When I link up with Minister Brandon, something's going to happen. When I get on this pulpit and another 30 will oversee it, something happens. Something happens. And immediately it will happen. If it's your health, health, call on the name of Jesus. If it's your finances, tell finances in the name of Jesus. If it's your husband, tell your husband in the name of Jesus. If it's your wife, tell your wife in the name of Jesus. If it's your children, I plead the blood of Jesus over you. You show hope, Satan. You have to tell, you have to speak those things as though they already are. And that's what they did because they knew something was going to happen immediately. That's the same thing when we, we as people of God, I don't want to rush because I'm going to get this all out of me. <laughs> we as people of God, we're faced with so much. We're faced with life issues. People are dying. People are getting shot down for no apparent reason. Our babies are doing things that we know that they shouldn't be doing. But God is still able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you can ask or think. He says to keep your mind stayed on me. I don't care which way you go. I don't care which way life will take you. I don't care which way you will be. I don't care if he do me like this. I don't care if he do me like that. But I know who God is to me. When I go to sleep, I tell him thank you. When I wake up, we out in the morning, I tell him thank you. When I wake up in the morning, I tell him thank you because I'm not worthy. None of us are worthy. But since I know who my lifeline is, I know who I depend on, and I know who's my helper, I know who my bridge over trouble water is, I know the way maker, I know the comforter, I know who he is. But I ain't always been here. But I thank God for where I am now. And where he's taken me. And where he's taken the people of God. I pass each and every last one of you sometime in life. And I see change. I see growth. I see God doing things. It is, it is, it is a blessing to see my family members in the house of God. The Bible says, train up a child in the way that they will go, and they shall not depart. And because my family know the way, they're coming. They're coming. And that is to God be all the glory. Because I remember when I was a little boy, I had, my godmother was a, a missionary, and my godfather was a pastor. 
And I remember as a little boy, I was terrible. I like to play with fire and all that crazy stuff. I did, I ain't gonna lie. I was real bad. And I, I tell my stories wherever I go because I pray that it be a blessing to somebody. But it's in the book, in the Bible, it talks about it's like fire. Shut up in my bones. And the same way I used to play with that fire, that fire burns within me now. It's something about when you get on this altar and you call on the name of Jesus and God begins to move in and take over. It's like Campbell's soup. He's like Campbell's soup. He is so good. The word says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. He is good. He's a good God. He's a great God. I tell my story wherever I go because I want somebody to be blessed like I was blessed. I want somebody to be brought from darkness like I was brought from darkness. I want somebody to change their lifestyle. I want somebody to stop killing, stop lying, stop doing this and that because I would know where God has brought me from. And I have to tell my story. I have to tell my story. I have to. Because I'm, I'm going to be the only God they're going to see. And I have to live this and truly live it. And I have to line up with the word of God. We all do. The Bible says to work out your salvation with fear and with trembling. So that means you have to come to him as humble as you know how. Trembling. Trembling. And it, and, and, and it just talked about that. The keeper was trembling because he couldn't believe. How did they get them jail cells open without the key? But the key was Jesus. He, you have an advocate with him. You have to, all you got to do is open up your mouth. Call him. And the doors will open. Call on him. And that stronghold will be released. Call on him. Your husband will get saved. Call on him. You'll be delivered and set free. Call on him. He'll do it the impossible. He'll heal your body. He'll mend your heart. He's a burden bearer. Hallelujah. That's what he is to me. I've been working a job for 11 years and I'm going to be truthful. I don't qualify for it. I know I don't. But because God wake me up, I go in there. I tell God thank you, and I smile, and I just do whatever Lord, whatever they ask of me. And every time they promote something or whenever they ask me to do something, all I can say to God be all the glory, because that ain't me. I want, them, I want y'all to know it ain't me. So the pictures y'all see in that kitchen, that ain't me. That's just God's gift he gave me. And I cherish the gift. I respect all of my gifts that God has given me. Because I never know where it's going to take me before men that have never seen me or heard me. But all I can do is stand on the word of God. And that's what Paul and Silas did. They stood on a firm foundation. And they went out in the town and they began to tell the goodness of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I don't care if they tell you, sit down. I will not. I got work to do. And my assignment is to preach the word and teach the word and to minister and to lay hands on the sick, to lay hands on the lame, to touch blinded eyes that they may see. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. the Lord Jesus. So we as people of God, we got to be like Paul and Silas. Stand on it. Amen. I don't care if they throw you in the jail cell. I don't care if you, your health fell on you. I don't care. If your finances dry up, I don't care if your husband walk out on you. I don't care if your family talk about you like a dog. I don't care. Stand on the word. Witness to somebody. Because somebody's going to bless you. And it's not about money. They're going to encourage you. You know how you go to the gas station and you put the, a pump in the gas tank? They're going to encourage you so you can go on. Go on and continue the assignment God has called you to do. God ain't finished with none of us yet. 
The best is yet to come. The best is unfolding. The best is unfolding. All you got to do is stand still. Go out in the highways and the byways. We were out doing a fish fry yesterday. People just walking out. I didn't even know these people exist. Okay. We gave away more stuff than we sold. To God be all the glory. You know why? Because she begot she. That's how you're supposed to do it. If I got to sell, give you this book so you can get saved, then I'm going to give it to you. Because eventually you're going to open this book up. And this book got the living word in it. Then you're going to come back and you're going to say like Brother Raymond did. I remember I was teaching Sunday school and he blessed me. He said, I was teaching, and I wasn't supposed to be teaching, but I was teaching. And I went to the book of Psalms 34. He said, what you read? And you know, Bishop always tells us it's better to read out loud. And so he began to read out loud. And I sat there and let my eyeballs move as he was reading because it blessed him. And then in turn, it fed me. That's how the word's supposed to do. That's why when God gives you somebody to go and travel, you're supposed to feed off each other. Because if I get if I'm blessed, I'm not gonna hold it on to myself. I'm gonna give it to my brother. I'm gonna give it to my sister. And then we're gonna become more than conquerors. Hallelujah. I thank God for Brother Raymond. He's a little turned up, but that's okay. <laughs> it's okay because God got him. God got him. And she begot sheep. Do you see him bringing his friends in here? God will do it. He'll use a lame man. He'll use, he even use a donkey. He'll use a drunk. He'll use a homosexual. He will use for his glory. Hallelujah. He has to get the glory. So if this carpet is red, it represents the blood, it's going to do what it got to do. It's a reputation of Christ Jesus. We are reputations of Christ Jesus. We once were lost, now that we're in the marvelous light, it is our job to go out in the highway in the world and tell the goodness about Jesus. Amen? Amen. Immediately, it happened. Okay.